So, hello everyone, uh, I'm Shiva Nejati, I'm a researcher at SVD Lab at the Center here. Uh, so I'm going to present automated testing of cyber physical system. This is going to be about the work we have been doing over the past five years here. Uh, with, uh, and the, the work builds on projects we have had with uh, companies in the automotive and aerospace sector. So before I start a talk, I would like to thank my wonderful colleagues here and PhD students, and also I would like to thank the industry collaborators that the work I'm going to talk about builds on our collaborations with these three companies in Luxembourg. So broadly, cyber physical systems are systems of network computations that control physical entities. And uh, so there are many phys uh, cyber physical systems around us. Uh, before I, want, I get into the act, uh, specifics of our work, I would like to, put, uh, to describe the context of the work and describe some key characteristics of CPSS. So the first thing I want to start with is that uh, cyber physical systems usually build on interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary engineering areas and uh, broadly the uh, development of these systems are model based, they rely on models. So we identify uh, in the model-based development of CPS, we identify three uh, stages, model in the loop, software in the loop, and hardware in the loop. So at the model in the loop sta stage, uh, engineers usually create models of software, plants, and uh, hardware, and environment models. And uh, they, uh, a common popular language that they use here is MATLAB Simulator. They use for, to create a virtual simulator of their systems. And the focus here is on functional aspects, functional requirements, and functional modeling. And then uh, later on, they move to still uh, software in the loop where they auto code uh, models uh, into uh, C code, or uh, maybe C code is manually generated. Uh, but here, the focus moves from function to architecture level, and therefore, they want to know integration issues. They want to know what are the real time, uh, they want to create a real time architecture of the system and to ensure that the system is able to run on a real-time platform properly and meet all its performance requirements and there is no integration error. And then at the last stage is that when we put the software on the uh, embedded device and the embedded device is usually connected to like a real-time emulator or, uh, 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 or uh, the actual device and uh, here is the hardware uh, in the loop stage. So in this talk, my, what I will describe is really mostly on modeling the loop stage. But I want to say that even though the focus is on mail, we try to take into account the limitations of steel and kill into uh, consideration because uh, we want our results, our test cases, our uh, analysis to be uh, reused and uh, to be applicable uh, at these stages as well. So here is just the schematic overview of uh, the approach that we have uh, for modeling the loop testing of cyber physical systems. So I refer to this model testing. So basically we have some model of CPS design, we have some uh, notion of Oracle that is uh, defined based on requirements. So here Oracle try, uh, uh, allows us to uh, determine what is incorrect and what is correct behavior. And then we want to be able to see if we can find an error by testing models. And if we find an error, we want to be able to ideally go to the model and uh, correct it. So here we have, I want to say that there are three main elements here that I want to talk about, the models, oracles, and testing. And what uh, is that when we want to design an applicable C, uh, testing solution for CPS, we want to answer these questions related to the three elements I just talked about. We want to know what are the useful and realistic models of CPS, how to specify test oracles to enable effective test testing of system requirements and design, and how to design a scalable testing techniques. And here by techniques can be very uh, broad. Uh, it can include various activities like test case selection, test case generation, fault localization. And uh, yeah. And here uh, at this, when I get to the specific research we have done here, you can see that we use AI techniques here at this stage to enable these automations. Uh, so let's start with CPS models. I want to say what we mean by C what kind of models we're talking about. So we talk about models that have dynamic behaviors. They have time varying, uh, they, they, their behaviors varies over time. They are executable. And I mean by, execute, uh, by executable here, I mean a rather loose notion of execution. I mean that they can be simulated using some inter like model interpreter that works based on some action language, for instance. 
And also, these models are usually hybrid, and by that I mean that they have both discrete continuous aspects because they have both algorithmic logical aspects there, and also they interact with physical dynamic, uh, they have physical dynamics aspects because they interact with physical devices. And also they exhibit uncertainty because, for instance, because of the uncertainty involved, involving the environment. And here I want to talk about some common uh, design controller designs in CPS. So some common ways that you can see these models are structured or uh, designed. So the simplest one is what we call open loop controller. We have a controller, it receives input from environment and it sends commands to actuator. Usually these kind of controllers can be implemented using state machines, perhaps with some real time, aspect, uh, with real -time information so that it, does, uh, it applies commands on a, real uh, on a time basis. Then we have more complex systems when we use closed loop controllers. So we have a model of plants, we have sensors that uh, uh, continuously get a status of the plant, and then the controller uses these updates, continuous updates from, uh, 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 from the sensor to, uh, to, to fine tune its behavior. So here we have a self-adaptive system. We have a system that can uh, change its behavior depending on how the, plant, the status of the plant is, plant is changing. So for instance, when we are uh, driving a car and we press a brake, we, we want the amount of force to be fine-tuned based on like friction of the road. This is something that can be done when you have more complex closed loop controllers. And then we go one step further, we have kind of what we call uh, autonomous controllers. So here, even the commands are not coming from a human operator or uh, other devices. The commands are uh, based, uh, this decided based on a decision component here. A decision component receives sensor and camera information, and then it makes a decision whether what kind of control action should be applied. So, uh, so these are the, what I wanted to say about at a high level, what kind of CPS models we are talking here. And now let's get to test oracles. So the main difference I would say between uh, when we talk about test oracles for CPS and other kind of software is perhaps is that the outputs here are uh, vectors over time, are signals. So system outputs are signals and usually in order to uh, evaluate uh, dynamics, uh, mm, dynamics of the system, mechanical behavior of the system, the engineers, uh, do not just in, uh, in inspect discrete values, but they inspect how the output changes over a time con uh, over a period of time. So this is the changes of this output over time period matters. And then also uh, we notice that test oracles here usually can be heuristic or partial because it's not easy to define exact or complete uh, test oracles. They can be quantitative when we want to. Uh, especially when you want to have, uh, capture some notion of risk, like you want to say some outputs are more risky than other outputs. And uh, also they can be effort in, uh, intensive, it might not be very easy to automate this kind of oracle, test oracles. Again, some examples we have seen in our work. So what we saw is that sometimes engineers, it's easier for them, instead of saying what is exactly the output, they say what they don't want to see in the outputs. So for instance, these are a number of patterns in that they don't want in, to see in, signal, uh, in the uh, signal outputs that they receive from controllers. So for instance, they don't want to see these uh, frequent and uh, fast uh, oscillations uh, that shows kind of instability. They don't want to see that the output grows to a very large number. This is some, some sort of growth to infinity. Or they don't want to see this kind of uh, discontinuity when you have a very short period pulse. Uh, because, because all of presence of all of these things, when the output is going to be sent to a, pro, uh, a physical process or a physical device, this presence of these kind of behaviors can cause damage. But these are not really showing immediately an error. These are things that engineers want to study more, to, to investigate. Other kinds of oracles is that sometimes they use a reference signal based on what is measured from old systems or based on what the measurements they have done on a simulator. So they have a reference signal and then they want to use this reference signal from measured or simulated past systems on their current system. And then here they often need to consider some margin of error, but then the question is that how to define this margin of error. And also sometimes it's easier for them to describe in terms of signal features, signal shapes, rather than exact, uh, value, exact uh, 
mm, an exact reference signal, for instance. And sometimes we can have oracles described on temporal properties, in particular when we want to talk about response time and when we want to talk about properties with time bound and so on. So that was basically what we wanted to say about CPS models and CPS oracles. And now I want to say about the, C the, the particular CPS testing challenges that we have been focused on in our work. So, uh, so what we see is that test inputs a space for CPS is usually large and multidimensional. And as a result, the te techniques that rely on coverage or combinatorial testing may not be very suitable here, may not perform well. Time, uh, model executions can be time consuming, so if we, are, we, we rely on executing models, it can be again a challenge. Fault localization is difficult because the input space is large because models are complex. And then there is limited time budget due to the fact that uh, test, uh, test oracles might be difficult to, might need to be manually designed, or uh, if you want to get the test cases, the, uh, the, these, uh, your test suites, you want to eventually run it at the heel level, then you cannot have a very large test uh, suite. So we have tried to develop, devise a number of solutions here, addressing these challenges. The so solutions briefly are listed here. I'm going to go through a case study and uh, a specific example to demonstrate these solutions. But what I want to say broadly, these solutions rely on metaheuristic search, and uh, like here we have metaheuristic search for input generation and uh, prioritization, and also they also rely on some sort of, uh, in some cases, on machine learning, like building predictor, predictive models and also classification techniques. Uh, so what I do now is that I start talking about the projects. So the project, the first project I want to talk about is testing advanced driver assistance systems. So advanced driver assistance systems are basically self-driving features of uh, cars. Uh, they, uh, at a high level, they have this, this structure. So we have sensors, uh, actuators, plants, and decision-making component, and also controller component. So here, the models that we have in this case study is that the, uh, we have a simulator that uh, works based on physical mathematical models. In this simulator, we have created, uh, we have, uh, uh, it's actually, the, uh, it's not created by us, it's a simulator that is commercially available, and uh, it uh, includes models of the uh, pedestrian, models of the uh, vehicle, and also it models environment aspects, like uh, the road, the friction road, the weather, uh, characteristics, the wind, and all the impacts of the, uh, these environment aspects and dynamics of the human and cars are taken into account. So then we have also uh, some notion of Oracle that uh, ba is based on the description of crashes that we get from engineers. So here is an example of an ADAS system. It's an automated, uh, automated emergency braking system. Uh, the design is that we have a decision-making component, it receives sensors and vision camera information, and it sends commands to brake control based on the decision that it uh, makes here. So the function of this uh, AAB system is to avoid collision with pedestrian, uh, and so uh, we have detection here, and it decides whether there is a, a pedestrian in front of the car and whether collision is likely to happen, and in that case, it uh, sends an appropriate brake request to the controller. So I want to show you how the simulator works here, because then uh, you can see the uh, more concretely what. Uh, so here is yeah, it's a bit dark, but uh, so here we uh, we have the simulator that we can define the. Uh, road, we can define infrastructure, and there is actually a pedestrian here is running, uh, is a child is walking, and there is a car. It's a bit, uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but there is a car here coming. And here you can see that uh, the, the vehicle speed is shown here. We can see the field of view of uh, the camera in front, because we have a camera and sensor in front of the car, and this is the field of view. And also the AD system is already integrated in this simulator. So in this simulator, the um, uh, car and the pedestrian are already uh, simulate models, and the AV system is already a simulate block integrated within this system. So uh, 
Here, uh, nothing. So it's still the car is not, uh, the AB is not, is not doing anything. And there is a point here that, okay, the detection is happened, so it detects the child here. And then it uh, starts applying braking here. So, so you can see this is the car and this is the pedestrian and right. So, and the speed is going low, so now it uh, stops and nothing happened. So this is, uh, so we are able to create uh, different scenarios in this simulator and let me give, go back to my presentation here. So we are able to create different scenarios. We can define different uh, environment conditions, different kinds of roads and so on. And the simulator gives us uh, output. And the output it gives us is the behavior of the dynamic, the mobile objects over time. So the behavior of the uh, vehicle and the child. And uh, so, as, so this is the model that we are using in our work. And then as for Oracle, we, we rely on engineers to describe for us what are the be, uh, ex expected behaviors or what are the undesirable behaviors of the system. So for instance, in case of AIB, uh, this is an example that describes critical behavior, uh, beha unwanted behavior. So AIB detects a pedestrian in front of the car with a high degree of certainty, but an accident happens where the car hits the pedestrian with a relatively high speed. So here, uh, the vision component is working fine, so it can detect the, per, the pedestrian, but then for some reason, the, uh, they want to see if, given that vision component is working fine, they expect the AB to be able to properly avoid accidents. And so then we define the, uh, the domain. So we define what uh, input, the uh, input uh, of the system, which can be both aesthetic inputs like the uh, environment situations and also the dynamic inputs like the uh, position of the vehicle and the uh, pedestrian and the output are, will be the vectors in addition to sensor information. And we define test oracles based on these outputs. So now I describe the first part of the work that is generating critical test scenarios via metaheuristic search. So we use metaheuristic search to generate critical, to automatically generate critical test scenarios using this simulator. And the input is to this search is that we provide input data ranges and dependencies, the simulator, and fitness functions that are defined based on the oracle. And here I describe the search at a very high level. I think you will see more examples of search later on during the day. So, uh, we, uh, according to, uh, this is a uh, population-based search, so we have test input generation and evaluating test input. So test input generation at the beginning, it randomly creates a number of test inputs. And then uh, at the evaluation, we simulate every candidate test input, so we get the output, and then we compute fitness functions using the output. So then it, uh, and the value of the fitness function allows us to determine how uh, critical the test scenario is. And uh, then at the later stages, we use here genetic operators to generate new test cases, and we continue this process until eventually we uh, uh, provide an output, which is a set of test cases revealing worst case system behavior. So now I want to just show you one example, like after applying the search, one example such critical behavior. So we'll use this one. Okay, so, so this one again, uh, yeah. We have a uh, curved road and we have a pedestrian. I hope it stops in time. <laughs> so here we detect. So here is because we want to see if we detect, do, are we able to, does AB work correctly? So we detect a, a pedestrian. And? and for whatever reason, it doesn't <laughs> stop. So this is an example that, in fact, it very much depends on the how fast uh, the detection happens and how, so it was not enough time basically for A, B to uh, stop uh, the car. So, uh, so now, so we did this first piece of work. We created a large number of uh, critical test scenarios. We showed them to the engineer and they liked it because there were many cases that they could not think about without, you know, by themselves, by manually creating these scenarios in the tool. 
So then uh, we had a, but we had a problem. It was that the search was very uh, slow. And the problem is that here, each simulation is, is a real time simulator. So basically, simulation is like shows you around one minute uh, Simu uh, driving of a car, so uh, then it means that like you need for just 500 simulations, it takes eight hours. And uh, well, those who know the search algorithm, you know that you need a lot of uh, you need to. And if in order to do to rely on real results scientifically, you need to run a lot of uh, search algorithms for a long time. So then the question was that how can we improve this time performance? And we really re relied on surrogate modeling. Did you we decided to use predictive models to improve the search time, the search performance. So here, the goal is to predict fitness based on uh, dynamic variables. And we use neural networks to create predict predictive models here, the predictions. So here, getting back to this high-level view, this is the part that is problematic, simulating every test scenario. And this is what how we do is that we created a, pred uh, a surrogate model. And we use, uh, and each time that we have a new candidate, we first use the prediction from the surrogate model and also prediction errors to see whether it is worth running actual simulator for this scenario. Because if based on the prediction value and also based on the prediction error, we realize that this candidate solution is located in part of a space that is so far from the interesting area, we can already prune it without running a simulator. The simulator here, so the prediction model here is used to prune the parts of a space that are so far from our interesting area, the, fit, the fittest area of the search or the area that contains the most critical behaviors in our work. So then here is just to show an example of output of our approach. So we got uh, its famous uh, population-based search algorithm. Uh, we, up, uh, we combined it with surrogate models, and we combined the uh, performance with a baseline search, which is not, that is not combined with the surrogate model. And here you can see that we are running it for uh, some uh, fixed amount of time, and here we are comparing the output based on uh, HP, which is a metric for uh, evaluating the output of multi-objective search algorithms. So the higher the value of HP means that the better solutions we are finding, and here we can see after some time with surrogate model, we are able to move in fast to finding better solutions. So at, uh, at this time, we are basically improving, outperforming NSGA2 when we use surrogate model. So, now I would like to move to the part that we use uh, to combine our search algorithm with classification model. And then the motivation for this work was because we, uh, so when we generated these scenarios and we showed them to engineers, they were interested uh, that they see these scenarios, but they still wanted to get a sense of what, where their system fails to behave correctly, to better, a, more, a better explanation of why these failures happen. Because the failures are not just happening for faults in software. The failures can happen in this case because of the dynamics of the pedestrian, because of the situation in the road, because of the weather, because of many things, or because of hardware. So uh, another thing is that uh, in this work, when, uh, so in addition to better explaining failures, we also wanted to be able to do more effective search in, uh, in this uh, input space, which is very large and multidimensional. So to explain this, what here this time what we change here, you change the part that test input generation. So instead of uh, using a typical uh, breeding and genetic operators to create new elements, here we at, uh, after running a few uh, iterations of the search, we create a large number of individuals. We create a cl classification tree, and the classification tree tells us what are the more fittest areas. So we, are in, uh, we use the classification tree and we lay, based on labels that uh, dividing the uh, individuals into critical, non-critical. So that the classification tree can characterize the part of input space that is more, that is more likely to, to include more uh, critical behavior. So we, we build the classification tree and then in, uh, we focus more uh, on the individuals that are located in the fittest region. And we optionally can also apply, do some breeding in those regions, but not in the entire space. 
And then as an output, so the good thing here is that, so uh, first, uh, this classification tree can help us to do a more focused search in more critical areas of the input space. And also as an output, we get a characterization of the critical input regions, because this classification tree actually characterizes where, based on what conditions on the input variables, we may more likely to have failures. So here is an example of a classification tree, for instance. We have created during search. So we have uh, here, you can see a tree is uh, uh, labeled by conditions. These conditions are on the input uh, variables. So here it says if the road topology is curved and the radius of the curve is within these values, then okay, we may uh, be, and then also if we have the pedestrian running with this orientation, and also if the pedestrian speed is this, then we are more uh, likely to have critical behaviors. And so what, when we build this, this tree in the middle of the search, we can just put more focus on scenarios that are located in this leaf there. And then after some iterations, we create another tree here. And this tree, again, we have a little bit more, a few more critical regions, more fine grade critical regions, and we have more specific conditions characterizing these critical regions. Question. Uh, yes, uh, um, Sorry, I guess, you, I guess you lost me at some point. Um, I still want to understand what the input to the test is and how you, how you synthesize that. So if you have a visual, so do you actually synthesize a full-fledged 3D model with, a, with the ability to visualize and feed all that into, what, into, into a camera or the sensors of the system that you want to look into? Or is this sort of, or, or, or is this so just the, a surrogate model? So the input are these are the the input is basically a vector of variables. Uh, so the, vector, the variables are uh, we have variables. So this tool, this simulator, has some sort of API where we can set uh, give, give values to variables. Yes. So we can give values to weather type, uh, or to give values to road type, and uh, scene light, and okay. so on. And also we can say, that, okay, I want the initial position of the pedestrian to be there, I want the car to start from there. And then we fix a number of uh, factors, like we assume that the car orientation is fixed. So, this, you, so, 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 in your case, so in your case, the car and the simulator are all one entity, and you don't further go into whatever, whatever happens in the car or the interaction between the simulator. Yes, we don't care about that. So that's, that is what the simulator does. We just say that, okay, I want a, a, lean, a, a fixed trajectory. Like, I don't, I don't consider a pedestrian that walks like this. I think the pedestrian, I say that this is the orientation, the pedestrian walks like that, the car walk, uh, drives like that. And then the output, I give a, a vector. A vector of like, uh, over, uh, for one minute running it, I know that exactly at each time a step, where the car was, where the pedestrian was, and what were the their splits. And uh, yeah, so then the output of our approach is that we have uh, two things. So we have better failure detection because we are able to more focus on uh, more complex parts of the space. And we have also failure explanation. So to, the, to evaluate uh, the failure detection, we actually combine, uh, com uh, compared our search algorithm combined with classification with baseline search algorithm. And we were able to uh, generate 78% more, more distinct critical test scenarios here. So we are able to create more interesting and distinct critical uh, test cases in this case, compared with baseline search that, does, uh, for, uh, that uh, spreads our search effort uh, across the input space. And the failure explanation is that the characterization <coughs> of the input space showing under what input conditions the system is likely to fail. And then what we did is that we, we got this uh, tree. We try to visualize the input conditions of this tree in this like some form of visual better explaining to the engineers. And we showed some example of this kind of uh, visualizations to engineers. So, with, so this, this, in this uh, picture, we are trying to say that, you see if you have curved errors with this radius, and when the pedestrian starts from this area with, some, with the, an angle like this, and if the speed of the car is more than 36 and the speed of the person is uh, six kilo, is less than six, so it's like the person is not necessarily running. So then you are more likely to have failures. Like A, B is more likely to fail. And in fact, the example you saw, it was uh, because we have like a radius that the uh, system fails because we have a radius like 
uh, high, uh, steep radius and also the car was a bit fast and the pedestrian orientation was a bit critical for the car to uh, recognize. And then after showing these pictures, we had some conversation, like we had uh, two meetings with them, uh, the engineers, we had some conversations with them to know how, uh, to, how they would use this information. And so the information can be useful for debugging, especially if they can see that the critical the explanation, the failure explanation does not match their intuition, so it means that something is wrong in deep algorithm, in the algorithms there. They can use for identifying hardware, uh, changes in their hardware. For instance, they can say, I would need a camera with a larger field of view. Also, one thing that they mentioned here is that they are almost always uh, interested to identify the least expensive uh, hardware that they can put on cars while uh, maintaining the safety, without compromising safety. So that's kind of, these characterizations can help, uh, help them to know what are the, uh, you know, what is the, uh, uh, the limit of the, uh, the camera field of view. And if they go below that, then they compromise safety. And also, the, uh, sometimes they realize that in some situations, they cannot really avoid failures because of the Curve being very, uh, because of the curves of the road or because of the uh, other situations, so they should not, have, uh, but they should be aware of the situations. They should be aware that maybe the system is, uh, there is a likelihood for that uh, self driving feature to fail in this situation. So now I would want just to briefly go to a few, just talk about a few other example projects we have here and uh, in the context of model testing. I don't want to go into details. So uh, before starting the uh, self-driving uh, project, we were working uh, with uh, an automotive supplier here and we were focused on testing controllers, implemented the simulating. So a lot of search algorithms that we used there were similar to what I showed to you now. Uh, but here we were more focused on functional, uh, in the testing individual functions of engine management controller. Uh, of, uh, in automotive system. We also did some work and analysis of CPU time usage and ECU software. When they put the software, when they integrate software, they put it on the ECU, they want to know if uh, the performance is uh, correct and whether they don't use CPU time uh, for uh, more than some limit. So again, we use search algorithms here to uh, enable this kind of analysis. Then we also work a little bit on fault localization and simulating models. This one is more, uh, we focus on statistical debugging and also we use a little bit of machine learning to help uh, predict uh, the performance of statistical debugging, but uh, I don't want to go to details of that for now. And then uh, we have recently started a project uh, in the satellite domain, and uh, so, uh, so this, one thing, interesting thing about satellite is that they have two aspects, they have control aspects and they have data communication aspects. So, and control aspects, so we send a satellite to a space and then we expect it to stay in its orbit and properly point into the Earth to be able to do send signals and communicate data. And also it needs to be uh, very accurate in the sense that it receives a measurement. Data. It measures uh, using sensors information about the position of the sun and so on. But it needs to be filtered, to have uh, uh, accurate filters to remove noise and to have a very accurate measurement. So, on the control side, there will be similarities with the work we did uh, in the automotive, but uh, well, and some differences in the sense that uh, here you have less control and more possibility of noise. And then uh, there is another aspect is the data communication aspect. So uh, you want to see the, uh, the quality of uh, the data communicated between satellites and antenna. And what they do to, uh, to ensure that uh, when, they, when they want to uh, make sure the satellite has this characteristics, they, want, uh, they do some sort of uh, testing called uh, satellite in-orbit testing, at which they run particular measurement procedures to make sure that the satellite uh, is able to properly provide service. And then here, the complexity of this, uh, stage, uh, this uh, activity is that there is a lot of uh, hardware uh, devices involved in this testing, and uh, and there is time pressure because the, running these measurement procedures is very uh, slow. And uh, so therefore what they do is that they, uh, they require what we, we are, the, what we are doing in this project is that we are de designing some test case prioritization techniques to, uh, 
optimize the set of test cases that they should run at the heel level for the purpose of acceptance testing, for validation of uh, the software, uh, the uh, satellite. So, uh, Right, so just back to this view that I showed you at the beginning. So here, uh, we, in our work, we did, uh, we devised a number of techniques. Search, we use search for, data for test scenario generation. We use prediction models to improve performance of search. And we use classification models to uh, both improve the uh, performance of search and quality of search, and also to provide explanations, failure explanations. And then the thing is that one, uh, one thing is that when we, we have, when we talk about analysis of models and uh, CPS uh, and so on, one question that comes into account is that, so how about if we use other techniques in the literature that already uh, are very, uh, there are very well developed techniques uh, called model checking that uh, we have, but it has very similar structure. So we have models, instead of oracles, we have formal properties and we want to see if the model satisfy formal properties or not. And then we have here, usually the techniques rely on symbolic techniques, exhaustive search via uh, solvers and so on. So what I want to say is that, uh, well, so one thing I want to say here is that it really matters on your context. If, if based on your the characteristic of the context, you, uh, you we are able to uh, capture models in a way that is amenable to model checking, like we can, uh, we can put away uh, the physical dynamic parts and then focus on algorithmic aspects, yes, model checking techniques can be applied. But for some reasons I have listed here, I want to say that they are not necessarily generalizable to the entire CPS. So we should never say that, so with model checking we can, do, we can generalize it to the entire models that we see in the CPS domain. And here I'm just listing a number of aspects that their presence can make probably model checking techniques inapplicable or maybe easy, very difficult to apply. So when you have comp uh, continuous mathematical models, especially when we have plant models, so we want to check the models in the presence of plants, uh, and also when we have uh, library functions, library code, and also when the system has nonlinear behavior. And this nonlinear behavior can be due to complex mathematical operators, like you have a square root or uh, other kinds of nonlinear functions, or when, what happens here, uh, here, uh, here is that in uh, many control systems, we have saturation of actuator sensors. So actuator sensors have some physical bounds, and they work within those physical bounds. So if the, uh, if the command that is, uh, so if the controller output exceeds those physical bounds, bounds we have to saturate them to those uh, boundary values. So this can make, uh, uh, basically this may defy the nonlinear, the linearity assumption. And also sometimes there is a great reliance on measured data. So sometimes they don't, they are not able to describe the functions in a symbolic way uh, in, the mo in the models, but they use, an, uh, engineers uh, rely on measured data and they uh, put this measured data in form of some lookup tables, MATLAB lookup tables in their models. And uh, so that can make the system nonlinear. Also the test oracles, so, so there are, these are the assumptions that may be made that implicitly when we use more exhaustive techniques based on logic-based techniques. So we may assume that the test work is discrete or they are exact or complete or they are fully automatable. So these are things that may make, okay, the approach applicable to certain kinds of CPS systems, but not all. And also the great focus on structural coverage, but structural coverage is not necessarily a, a good indicator for fault revealing ability in many domains. And the last point is probably scalability issues. So just to conclude, so we use search-based uh, solutions to uh, automate model-based testing and uh, model testing. And they are versatile, they decrease modeling requirements, they relax assumptions of test oracles, they are scalable, easy to parallelize, they can be combined with um, machine learning, statistics, and solvers, but they are usually solutions are context-dependent and uh, they require massive empirical studies. So, yeah, I guess I stopped. I think that was all I wanted to say, and thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we have some time for comments and questions. Yeah, so, so I'm interested in, in uh, the surrogate modeling, because 
I would guess it has to do with, with this specific context, right? Because otherwise, a bug in this office can be totally, I mean, it can be a point in the input space. So then you cannot use the surrogate model because there's no way to predict that it will fail in that very specific point, right? But I guess, is it because this is a simulation, so you can have more continuous? As it gets better? more continuous, when you have, uh, when the landscape is more continuous, so it's yeah. not like that you have bots. So you can drive it to areas where it tends to be more problematic. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, because for normal testing, it would probably be hard. I mean, I think, yeah, it depends on the language. I mean, if it's more discreet kind of yes. behavior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, we use, of course, we use, uh, uh, we need to have a number of, uh, sufficient number of uh, simulation examples to, to beat the circuit. Yeah, yeah.